Contenders ready! Gladiators ready! Three, two, one! The Gladiators! Hello and welcome along to another episode of the Glad Pod in association with Gladiators TV with me, David Blackmore, and as always, my co host, it's the amazing Jet. You waffler. <laughs> This is episode number seven of Glad Pod in this first series. I can't believe number seven already. Um, this week we are speaking to a gladiator that quite a few of you have been looking forward to hearing. It is called none other than... The old snake hips himself, who hasn't been too well recently and possibly because of that very reason, but he's going to let us know all about it. Yes, he is, absolutely. It's Cobra, by the way, and he is one of my absolute... my favourite gladiators and I think when you have these gladiators and I think as you're about to hear he's always going to give you some great stories but being in the wars recently does add a bit more to it actually more ways than one in that you are going to hear throughout this podcast you are going to hear a squeak on the chair um, which is pretty much Mickey really uncomfortable during the whole chat not because of the questions i should add but just because of his you know recent operation that he's had and the recovery and journey that he's been on just him trying to get comfortable all the time which is why as well the audio levels might just sort of dip in and out as well because as he's getting himself comfortable again he does sort of move himself around from his microphone but it was quite a shock for me actually because when you expect to meet gladiators yes i knew all about of his recent troubles but still i mean he's still in fantastic shape but when you see them you expect these gladiators to be these beyond human beings eternally invincible and it's not the case we've all had quite some lives i tell you now you're going to be delighted to hear that after the shambles that was password gate from last week's show we are now back into the uh, glad pod email and it's great to see actually quite a few emails waiting for us in the inbox it's also rather embarrassing this is now being called spam gate there are quite a few emails in our, our spam folder as well which makes sense seeing it's like people emailing us that we haven't emailed before etc etc but one of them was mark george he said it was great listening to jet he was lucky enough to meet her hundreds of times in fact she gave me my first ever backstage pass access um great interviewee great interviewer looking forward to hearing more oh and i have the games that david spoke about and yes mark i saw your post on facebook that is exactly the game that i was talking about and for those of you listening who haven't can't remember the game i was talking about we will um share the tweet uh we'll put it on instagram put it on facebook as well so you can see that the game i was talking about does anyone have that game can i borrow that game can i relive my youth and play that game again but yes mark well done for 10 10 glad points you get there for uh, not only listening so intently that you remembered it but also knowing which game i was talking about um jamie how love it very enjoyable podcast i hope flame phoenix and nightshade do a podcast in the near future yes we would love all three to do the podcast uh not wanting to give away too much of a surprise but one of those names will be on the series uh on the glad pod sorry in series one we also mentioned previously about apple podcast reviews and there are some great ones on there matty thank you so much so pleased to have this pod i love the show and it takes me back to my childhood one guest i would love to hear from would be shadow and about his record on the event duel please also get saracen on um we did actually try to get saracen on for series one but he's playing it pretty cool at the moment i'm sure we might be able to twist his arm soon shadow again would be fantastic we've not heard really anything from him since the show so it'd be great to hear from him manic ill wrote on our uh, podcast we need trojan on this asap believe me we're, we're trying to make it happen uh tommy lj as a bit of a super fan i thought i pretty much knew everything about gladiators so i'm absolutely delighted to already be learning new things from this wondrous podcast can't wait for more gareth writes i was such a huge fan at the time of the show and i was lucky enough to see filming at the national indoor arena on two occasions now starting to meet gladiators at conventions great to see this podcast starting up for all gladiators fans reminds me of the good times of the 1990s love it and Holly 
as soon as this was announced, I was excited for it. It's not disappointed. This podcast reminisces everything about Gladiators and it's perfect for everyone missing the show. Thank you for this podcast. It feels like a gift. The last one, the last email that I saw in our spam folder. Sorry, Matthew, I'm about to read out your letter. I'm sorry it took so long for us to get around to your letter. This is by far the email to beat all emails when it comes to uh, what's arrived in a GladPod email. So this is from Matthew Keegan. I saw your call out for Gladiator Stories on Twitter. I was a young Gladiator super fan back in the early 1990s and I have a few stories to tell that I thought might be of interest. These days, I'm a journalist for The Guardian, BBC, The Independent and others, but I actually have Gladiators to thank for launching my career as a journalist. So here we go. Brace yourself, buck yourselves in, kids, because I'll tell you what, this is a story and a half, and all Gladiator-themed as well. I was nine years old when Gladiator started. I was obsessed from day one. More than anything, I wanted to meet the Gladiators, and so I started to write to different newspapers and magazines, asking if I could interview them as a young superfan, and eventually paid off. So his first interview for a newspaper was when he was 12 years old and it was a warrior from Gladiators. It was for Youth Express, which is a national newspaper for students distributed nationwide in schools. So he says he has Gladiator to thank for getting his first career break. Also, he says back when he was in middle school, he phoned up the producers of Sky TV and arranged for his school to appear on the children's TV game show Around the World in 80 Seconds because it was hosted by none other than Wolf from Gladiators. Ah! And not only was Matthew a contestant, he also won for his prize the whole school year, got a free trip to Alton Towers. Whoa! But but that isn't where the story ends. I said at the start of this in the preamble that this was an epic email and that you can keep, please keep your seatbelt fastened because we've still got a long way to go. Um, age 12 and 14, Matthew also got the chance to appear in Panto with Raider in 1995 and Rhino in 1997. But by far, his favourite gladiator was, of course, surprise, surprise... Jet. The name's very, very familiar, I must admit. Well, let me remind you about the first time you met Jet. You, you might not remember this, but the first time that Matthew met you was when he got backstage passes to a pantomime in Reading that you were starring in back in the early 1990s. He and a friend arrived at the theatre between the matinee and the evening performance. And as they arrived, they saw you leaving with a friend during the break in performances. So... They decided to follow her and he says, please, forg- please forgive us. We were only both 11 years old at the time and we were huge fans of yours. Anyway, we ended up at a nearby Pizza Express. It was quite funny, Matthew says. We didn't order anything in a restaurant. We just sat on the table opposite Jet. <laughs> they were completely starstruck and they remember telling one of the restaurant staff, Hey, you know that's actually the jet from Gladiators over there. Now, Matthew says about 10 minutes of them just staring in wonderment at you. You very kindly came over to the table and asked if she could help, which actually sounds a bit passive-aggressive, but there you go. They explained that they had backstage parties to meet you after the performance, and all things considered, he says that you handled it very well, you showed a lot of kindness and was a great sport about it, and then they got to meet you back uh, again backstage afterwards after the show, and she was an absolute delight, very gracious and generous with her time. I'm trying to go back, because my, my, I've got a bit of a cheese brain at the moment, I must admit, um, <laughs> Is that a ladies thing? Uh, too much information, but I'm, I generally do remember little snippets of things like that. And Matthew's story goes on. The second time I met Jet was backstage at the NIA in Birmingham after a taping of Gladiators about a year or so after meeting her in Reading. Following his interview with Warrior for Youth Express, Warrior arranged backstage parties for him and a friend. Most of the Gladiators was there, but I was most pleased to meet Jet again. May I also add that I was massively inspired by Jet's acrobatic skills when I was a kid, so much so that I took up gymnastics and I went on to compete and win several local competitions. So, ending this epic email, Matthew says he's got gladiators to thank for getting his first ever interview and starting him on his path to become a journalist. The show was such a positive experience on his childhood. I'm internally grateful for the inspiring and motivating show that it was 
Matthew. Thank you so much for the, taking the time to write through those memories and sharing it with us here on podcast because it's it's just, you know, when somebody kind of puts a fabric under their life or, to, you know, brings their life to this point that actually he's doing what he's doing now with the journey that he's had, it's like, yeah, that's impressive. So if you've got a glad story like Matthew, it doesn't have to be as epic as Matthew's. I don't think there's going to be many that are going to top that epic journey. You can unfasten your seatbelts, by the way, now. Um, the best thing to to do is to email us the gladpod at gmail.com we're also on facebook twitter and instagram and after all of that correspondence we did have quite a bit to catch up with it should be it should be said here is at long last our chat with cobra where the deadly bite of cobra cobra's a snake in the grass with a deadly bite a martial arts expert and kickbox champion watch out contenders old snake hips is back in town Three, two, one. So here we are with Glad Pod, and I am so happy and proud to announce that in the studio with us here today, it's Mick, Mickey, Wilson, Cobra, to you and I. Welcome, and thank you for coming to join us today. Afternoon. What are you doing? He's, he's crossing his eyes. Yeah. still won't know. It's just like a weak eye. So. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it is. We couldn't help but notice as you walked in, you are on a stick at the moment. What's going on, Mickey? I went for my second new hip. Your second new hip? I won four months ago, and uh, I'm on waiting for my second one. Goodness. All those years of doing martial arts. Yes. I'm running around in a, in a little bikini on that gladiators. That's I've done right. A bit too much and worn, worn all the all the cartilage and all the fluids gone. So. Well, this is just it. So here we are, nearly 30 years on from the show where we met in 1992, Gladiators on ITV. I was Jet, and you were Cobra. When you all, we always will be these Gladiators, won't we? I guess. But, but actually, I remember seeing you at tryouts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, after about an hour, I said to Nigel, I said, you've got to employ her, haven't you? <laughs> did you? Did you yeah. say that to him? And what did he say? He said, no, nah, she's useless. <laughs> <laughs> so if, um, if, 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 he, if it, he, just, he just looked at me and smiled. Mm-hmm. So what Mickey's saying is it hadn't been for him, you would never have become Jet. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put the seed. <laughs> yeah. I'll the seed. And I'm sure she, she just stood out. I've got no I reason, think I was reason the to only blow wind that... anywhere. Oh, bless you but do you know I think I was in that original audition because I'd only been a, I'd been a gymnast not about me today but a gymnast only a few years previously with all that dancing and I kept the acro skills and I think I was probably one of the only girls that could actually do some of it because it was quite it was quite an intense well, audition it's, it's did, well fit isn't it did, how are you called for that? <laughs> stop it let's quickly go over that. I'm 29 years old I'm from Dartford same place as uh, Mick Jagger was born yeah I, Mick Jagger Go and get my fat you thanks and all that stuff. I was one of seven children. My daddy was a big, robust kind of guy. He was always lifting weights and things, and that was my first influence in sport. Um, he's a strict disciplinarian as well, which gave me some discipline, which is a quality, obviously, you need to be a gladiator. But I don't take things too seriously. I think life's too short to be too, uh, too sensible. Um, I take gladiators seriously actually the actual competition but in between filming and stuff you know I like to be doing silly faces and doing me monkey impressions and things uh, just to bring in a little bit of levity into the show or for the other guys because sometimes things get a bit tense even on our side you know when you want to perform well for everybody you now things get a bit tense and I muck about trying to relax, relax everybody yeah, what happened? What Did you get a phone call? How did they no, find out about you? Take us I right was, back, maybe. I was coming back from the nightclub and I used to watch the, the American Gladiators. Okay. Oh, my, about, about one o'clock in the morning. And I was around my friend's house and his mum was up. And, she, and I said, oh, my, I'd be a contestant on that. Didn't think I'd be big enough to be a glad. And she said, you won't do that. I said, yeah. I, I, anyway, she, she sent her for an entry form. Then uh, I got an entry form and I, I sent off to be a contestant and I sent in a, a picture looking really handsome 
Which you know. <laughs> <laughs> Not you can doctor it. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's no uh, CGI or whatever they call it nowadays. Yeah, and yeah. Um, they phoned me up and asked me if they could come in for a chat. Nigel Lithgow and Andrew Norgate was. That's right, yeah. And they asked me if I could get bigger and more cut. Oh. So I don't think they meant tall. I think they wanted me to get bigger muscles and yeah, yeah. essentially calling me fat. <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel when they asked you that? Because they oh. sort of said to me, could, when, the, when I got first selected, could I, could I put on a bit more muscle? Bit muscle? And I thought, well, I'm not really a bodybuilder, but... Yeah, I, was, I packed in a bodybuilding, really. I was boxing. You do? Uh, mm. Where Danny Williams was fighting. They could only a lot of, lot of boxers know their names from, from the past. So I wasn't really doing a lot of bodybuilding. Mm. And um, so I did. I went back and hit the weights and stuff. I carried on doing lots of aerobics and running, which I enjoy anyway. Did they then have to reassess you? Did they sort of say, oh, we'll have to have a look at you again and see if you well, are well, kind of a right size? Well, or? when I turned up at the, the um, tryouts, I done yeah. okay. And they asked me to be a reserve. That's right, that's the bit I remember. Oh, so... Yeah. I, so wasn't, I wasn't handsome enough to be on the other <laughs> yeah. And I got there and, you know, I charmed everyone. There's <laughs> <laughs> old snake hips at it already. Well, I was really relaxed because there's no pressure on being a reserve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to get six weeks holiday from... Uh, I was a lift engineer for a Japanese company in the city. So I had it was three weeks of filming. So I thought, that'd be handy. And it's quite really good money for it. <laughs> what a holiday. Hmm. And I got there's no pressure on at all until Nigel Lithgow pulled me out from the restaurant where we used to eat and said, uh, he'd like, give me seven shows. I really can't. Oh, wow, thank you. Really? And, um, that night I'm laying in a hotel where I think, oh, I'm going to be famous. Hawks partner is Cobra, our champion full contact kickboxer. I wouldn't argue if he kicked sand in my face, especially if he smiled like that. Is that when it first dawned on you yeah, that I can't go be on the telly? Because mm, back yeah. now everyone's got a camera, cameras on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no big deal. Yeah. And um, back then it was, and I always I wanted to be on the telly anyway. Did you? Yeah. So you were hope you were hoping to be on the telly. You were hoping it was going to work out. I'm a little kid. Really. What would you have wanted? That's go back to that kid then. What is it you'd have liked to have been on TV for? Anything. So glad someone really ticked oh, all the yeah. boxes. Yeah, it was. Because um, well, you were really kind of a bit late for me. I was like twenty nine. Yeah, yeah. Professional athlete. <laughs> Yeah. But my cousin, she was an actress. She used to go to the same drama school as Pauline Quirt and mm-hmm. everyone from, oh, I can't remember what show. Birds of a Feather. Oh, wow. Them. She used to be an advert and she used to do little appearances on soap operas and whatnot. So what did you think What do you think of your name when they said, OK, so you're going to be Cobra? Sounds quite cool, I think. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And the theme music? Can you remember your theme no. music? I still c- come in all the heroes now. It's rubbish. I actually, from the beginning... Come in all the heroes. I'm sorry for the guys that wrote it. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like it and uh, it's quite forgettable because you know it's 28 27 28 years on I can't remember it <laughs> I thought of oh, I better take as much have as much fun doing this show as possible because it looks like I'm going to be dispensable well Cobra I'm beginning to think that ah oh, that you'll do anything for a laugh actually that was an accident if so was <laughs> Oh, I've got nothing to say, but... Uh, well, darling, you whoops, just got a bit excited. Whoops, yes, yes. You're doing so well. Well, you know, all right for an old boy. Well, you ended up staying there yeah, for, from. Yeah. So there were twelve original glads that have gone. Uh, well, actually, and it was ten of you, weren't it? Then they took me in lightning on. That's right. Uh, lightning was the- so then became the twelve, but only four of you saw it right through to the to the final series. Can you remember the other three? Wolf, Saracen, and Mike. Wolf with his wheels partner Cobra. Oh, pushes him. Good team spirit there. Cobra says, Where's my agent? He's meant to be a team now. Oh, but you know our Wolf beat. He never did play by the Queensbury rules. Bad sportsman. Very bad sportsman. Oh, mind you, as steady as that camera's been all night. The great thing about Wolf. Grannies, small children, cheerleaders, everyone gets the same treatment. After our first event, Brian 12, Steve 3. Oh, look, didn't even, didn't even bat an eye. We, we were talking about the question beforehand and saying whether or not you would remember that, but mm-hmm. look at that. Well, I'm not, I'm more money, that's the problem. Do you know, it was your flexibility. What really made you stand out from the other guys who were all very large and some of them, their movement ability wasn't the best. And I think you'll probably agree with me, the sort of the, the lighter sort of power to weight ratio for those events that we had to face, like the contenders, as you got leaner, lighter and more flexible, which you 
had in an abundance from the very beginning. So you, for me as an athlete, you really stood out. I used to watch you and think, it's so brilliant because when that camera was on you and you'll be facing Cobra, you could do your air spins down into the splits and that is why you're hobbling about now, <laughs> admittedly. But you just gave so much value. Well, I always wanted to Van Damme. I wanted to be yeah. a muscular, uh, the flexible martial art artist Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. But Van Damme stole that from me to start with. And uh, it used to used to irk me when um, you used to get this term muscle bound. Really? Actually, bodybuilders, mm -hmm. they get bad press. But you're training every single body part. Yeah. So you get sort of an intuition and awareness. And it's easier for you to adapt to different multi-events because you've got that sort of... That, that symbi symbiotic oh, sort right. of feeling there, yeah, I think. Yeah. And I always used to love to run and do cycling, so I was always aerobically fit. So keeping in shape wasn't the toughest no, part of the. No, that was that was a given. I used to I used to ride me bike for six hours, then run to the gym, which would be about three miles from my home. Do a workout, run home. Used to enjoy it. I miss running actually. This is the worst thing about not having babies. I used to enjoy running. Mm. Yeah. Take us back a little bit more. So once you you knew you were on the show, just going into that first series, what was it like for you the moment you stepped into the arena when it was all kind of a naked arena? not many of the bits had been rigged we went down below didn't we to sort of start training on the hang tough rig below the arena which actually is quite like the original gladiators they used to stick the gladiators didn't they yes, yes. Roman yeah. Coliseum so the Coliseum. it's fascinating yeah. isn't it I'd still love to go but we were down there but what was going through your mind so I, th I felt really disorientated I don't know about you oh I was in a bit of a dream world really. you were you <laughs> still does seem to be, did I really do that I, didn't know, so I wasn't really in the moment uh, it was all quite surreal that's a lovely style Cobra's got look at that right there in the middle dominating and John doesn't know which way to turn he's one ringed and out of luck in comes Cobra oh he's handle that one oh he's one ringed one handed does he get a slip careless move from Cobra and John oh John went for the ring and slips. And Cobra thinks, thank you very much. Save me the job. But for the first series, you didn't get much practice time, did you, on, on the different events? So you, so to start off with, you were having to learn it as you were going, yeah. but presumably the likes of like Hunter were always up and down the wall, for example, trying to get better and better at it. Did, did you get did you get extra practices? No. Well, I was lazy to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I only did enough to satisfy the John Anderson and the trainers and, and the insurance people. Yeah. There's one, one year we had to go up to Polax, so or we had a, had a choice for what, what was a favourite and least favourite event to mine was pole dance. So I didn't really bother going up here. I just touched it. This is one difficult thing. So the first show, what was my first, the first show of this might be fourth or fifth series. The first, first thing is the pole dance. Oh, I ain't been up here. And I got beat twice. <laughs> Only just though. Uh -huh. And I got during fashion and said, oh, you're getting a bit too old for this, isn't you? And I couldn't say, I couldn't say I ain't been up there, that thing. Cobra looks to be struggling. And look, Glenn smacks it, presses the gladiator down button, and the Cobra's put back in his basket. Polax for the contender, it's either Summit or Plummet, and it looks as if Chris is capitalising on that 28-pound weight advantage. Clearly in the lead over Cobra, a couple of struts from the button, smacks it. Cobra can hold on, but he knows he's heading south for a second time. Cobra, he was fast. He was very fast, no excuses. I made a terrible start, but he was fast, and I don't think I would have caught him if I had a good start. Well, there's honesty for you. Thanks, Cobra! Anyway, you know, the hunt, talking about Hunter, he, he's, he was like head boy. Yeah. yeah. He'd be over there early in the morning. He want, and I, I probably would have been the same because he, at 19, 10 years older, I was 28, turning 29 earlier. I was a bit jaded. So, and I've never been really competitive against other people. I was always pushing myself. Yeah. For, for, to, just to get the best for myself, not, not worried about being anyone else. looking confident but I wouldn't hold his breath Hunter has a reputation for knocking the living daylights out of people in this event which won't affect Cobra because he's got no daylights left well I have to say Cobra 
Yes. And with all due respect to this fellow standing here, I was hoping that you would knock him off because of the size difference. And it looked at the beginning as if you might be in with a chance. Yeah, I was going easy on him, you know. <laughs> I'm so exhausted, I can't tell you. In fact, I won't tell you. <laughs> all right, we like it that way. And I mean, were you expecting that from him? Yeah, I've seen Cobra fight many, many times. He might not be as big as the rest of us, but uh, he's very devious with a stick. Certainly is. Well, well done to the two of you. You both pick up five points. Well done. Devious with a stick, he certainly takes a lot of it anyway. So take, take me back to that moment when you first, say, tried your costume on. Do you remember Stephen Adler? <laughs> yes. Our costume designer as well. Go on, what was that like? Did you go into like that? It was a room, wasn't it, with all the bits everywhere, and then yeah. he was like, here's yours. I wasn't impressed. No! <laughs> Why not? They're quite cheap. <laughs> very cheap. They're very thin, like, weren't very they? Could, yeah. Like, a, like an Eastern European circus look. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with these. <laughs> Just they've got lower budget. Well, I presume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're digging yourself further. Carry on. Oh well, wow, it's a strange thing, isn't it? You're like, uh, mine was a bikini. You know, just it was actually with yeah. sequin buttons <laughs> and a snake around the bottom. <laughs> Uh, you know, if you look, see where that snake is. <laughs> it's a snake head, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. So, and that reminds me when you, uh, you've probably heard this uh, dime, Jen. And, right uh, <laughs> <laughs> very, oh, so cocky and so, well, you probably remember. Oh, you were funny. Yourself, yeah, just really enjoying it. And that first mm-hmm. show, I'm about to do the rings behind the, the entrance. Uh, mm-hmm. They stuck, they called my name. I've looked down from, oh my God, I'm wearing a bikini. <laughs> and I've got to go out there now. You know, now. But up, I've really got to do something, and I'm telling you, I nearly ran home. I, my, I was really it felt like forever in a continent cobra, and I'm like, ooh, ooh, oh my god, ooh, literally, I'm wearing a bikini. <laughs> Yes. Oh, no. So that all hit you in that moment. Oh, that was your yes, first time the out there to compete yeah, no, oh, as a gladiator. Now it's real. It's and then old. suddenly, this is it. Yeah. But it was the moment you'd all been waiting for to be on TV. No, again, it was. I was. I don't know how soon it was before you told me I had to. Uh, uh, I missed two shows. Me and uh, Lightning, Lightning did four shows, but there was nine in the first series, and I did seven. So yeah. it, I, it was quite close to filming that he told me that uh, you know I'm going to be on the, okay. the day before or night. Uh, yeah, day before. So now it's just boom. All of a sudden, and yeah. I went out there, caught the guy, I thought, yeah, sack everyone else, I'm doing this on my own. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. And that was it. The year ago, it landed. Was, and that was your yeah. first, it's the first event, first win then? But, yeah, and I caught, caught both guys. You said you were lazy, but surely getting the guys was was, was well, a bit... Uh, my motivation was to do enough to get another series. <laughs> well, that's... Cause, fun. And you probably didn't know if you were gonna, if there was going to be another series or not at that point. three years, they didn't... Well, I had this conversation, and the third year, it was six weeks long and uh, up on starting them six weeks which is pretty difficult pretty uh, quite an accomplishment because we're running around yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Up on the stone in six weeks <laughs> in between shows I'm, I'm drinking Guinness and wine no. Guinness with, with uh, Shadow ah. a few of them shows I'm, I'm, I'm tipsy on Cobra incredibly quick in there I've been working out with Shadow and uh, I don't think this guy's going to fight me after working out with Shadow but you hadn't. You've done the shows with being, with being a bit tipsy. Like, oh wow! Well, we took, Did yeah, it make I it easier? I can't keep up with Shadow. Shadow over drinking. Being yeah, I do remember, six foot yeah. four and eighteen and half stone is didn't affect him. And there's, I'm, there's, I'm on the swing shot. This bungee game, and you can hear it actually. If you see the third series, if you'd be bothered, you can hear me going. Nah, 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 whee! <laughs> I do remember that. And I'm looking at the wall. I'm, I'm, it's because it's happened a few times. I'm looking at the wall. It's, I'm dizzy. I'm, oh my God, which one have I got to chase? <laughs> <laughs> we used to have to see, have meetings with the, with the producers every year. That's right. We had like a review every year. We were called in by Nigel, weren't we? Yeah, it was one on one. It was a school report. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Report time, yeah. yeah. It was a bit nerve wracking. Timekeeping, B. <laughs> Yes, this, like, it was literally. That's yeah, what good from our was, stats. They go through your win stats. They did sort of keep their foot on us, didn't they? They did. What was your to... first meeting like then? Was he was he all right with this? Is Nigel Lithgow? This one was. Yeah. You're, you're drinking too much. Did it? 
yeah. But is this, this is first series at the end of the no, first. This is third. Third, third. Oh, yeah, it relaxed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and again, they always made it seem that we are dispensable, which we weren't really, because it's hard to find muscular guys who are athletic. Most of us guys have done other things before. Warrior, our biggest guy, is a junior decathlete champion, mm. boys, and junior rugby international. Trojan was in a British squash team. Yeah, yeah. Wolf, you might not know this, he was in a British table tennis. I didn't team. know that. Uh, the B team, mind. <laughs> <laughs> so we were quite a- athletic before we yeah. before we took up bodybuilding. I did start bodybuilding until I was 20. Or I got a job in the gym, but I was doing martial arts extensively before then. Mm-hmm. I had 20 knockouts, 20 fights. Cause, uh, uh, then I actually won one. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is this is what I was going to say. So many years. So you were known for like the kicks and the splits, but one thing I'm only sort of researching is you were the practical joker of of the glads, weren't you? I, I, I was just having the fun. He was. Cobra, the joker in the pack, keeps the other glads smiling when things aren't quite going their way. Dino's certainly not going his way. What a change of direction. Cobra quick to counter. Look at how he moves those hips. Slithering towards Dino. He does it again, locks in. That's why they call him the Lord of the Rings. No Bino for Dino. So what kind of but what kind of things did you get up to then? Take Mick out of this lot. Mm-hmm. Stupid things. They'd be they'd be sitting there like eating dinner, you know, and they'd take they'd go to buy something like, <laughs> <laughs> under the table, t- tickling their legs and <laughs> yeah. just silly stuff dressing up as Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, he did. I, I, actually, here's the man here. I, I, I was I, I got tied to a spud. Um, what's the name? A, a potato carrier. What do you call them? Like a, like, a, like a wheelbarrow yeah like a, 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 a spun barrow yeah 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 <laughs> and I'm tired of here I've done myself an animal lecture mask and sitting there and this is going on all day but everyone's picking up and taking me to, to that monitor or <laughs> taking me take me around everyone else <laughs> nothing <laughs> said I'm like oh it's coming it's going to get covered but no more probably no, I don't know what year this was <laughs> mad <laughs> what about so that time you the rest of them? <laughs> you ran out with a blow up sheep as well didn't oh, you oh yeah, yeah I literally just yeah. I just saw that I, I saw that clip earlier on today was it the one time was it, was it, it was a pretend sex toy it was <laughs> <laughs> and it's been well, actually it's two Larry the Lambs it's um, all been signed by everybody oh really the, the oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Nigel was like not one. doing that and you did <laughs> oh, um, someone did a story about me running on with a sex toy and they had gloves on and I'm like it's loved it because it's just a little plastic sheet yeah yeah I mean, um, it did have an interest <laughs> <in it>. yeah. <laughs> terrible <laughs> But but was the practical joking part of trying to make it less stressful for the gladiators? Because yeah. I'm guessing that you... Boredom. Yeah. Long days. Mm. Some of them shows in the early days, they up six hours. Mm. Yeah. And moving the stuff in and out. They got quicker. Yeah. And the equipment in and out and that. But um, I suppose a bit long. And I'm, I'm a child. I've not had children. <laughs> so you... The Peter, Peter, Peter Pan Cobra. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just... I'm an 11-year-old. I refuse to grow up. Hissing for this snake, just cheers from the crowd. A veteran of four seasons, one of the fairest in the squad, and I didn't mean his hair. And of course, as we all know, one of the funniest. So as, they, as your time went on in, in the show, what was it like in terms of how you continued your training and how much was your life beginning to change? The training, I just was more professional. I made sure I'd get up in the mornings and done me run. Because we had to train for three reasons. Sports specific, so we were good at the events, for how we looked yeah. and also for general all-round yeah, fitness. So did costumes. you have to expand your fitness training? No, I just, just rearranged it because it would be arbitrary. I'd always like to have three, four runs in a week. I'd always be sparring or hitting yeah, the yeah. I, I wasn't sparring as much because you know, I'd be handsome <laughs> getting a kick in the mouth you know yeah fat lips and stuff and uh <laughs> So there's a bit of vanity there. And I just was more professional, made sure that I was aerobically fit, especially after me, me meeting with Nigel Lithgow, because they not only said, oh, you've, you've been drinking too much, you're fat. Oh, gosh. When, well, I was ill when we had our um, the, uh, fitness tests. You know, they put on, relaxed a bit. He was, yeah, he was being <laughs> but, honest, though. Did, yeah. did that give you a kind of a kick up the arse in well, they, way? Well, I said to them, I said, well, you don't tell us where we're back from year to year. So I think party, yeah. then I'm going to enjoy it as yeah. much as I can. And I said, well, you better be fit. You'll be back next 
next year and I had the best VO2 max out of the boys. Oh, good. Mind you, they are bigger, but no, mine was close to the marathon runners. Yeah, so yours is your power to weight ratio. I thought you were more kind of, in the very early years, as the boys' size came down, because obviously they were being monitored for not taking stuff that the bodybuilders would have taken originally, which wasn't illegal. So the goalposts were changing for I all of you. I wouldn't anything. I know, that's, you wouldn't have needed why, to. No. But that's, that's, why that's the thing also, with the steroids, it makes your muscles stronger, but not your tendons. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. for me, and also the first year I was 15, stone felt too heavy. Mm. So I always kept my weight down. Funny enough, though, I could have done with being a bit heavier when it comes to games like the um, yeah. Powerball, when it comes to taking someone else down. Contestants were similar weight to me. Sure. 13 and a half. One year was about 13, stone three. Yeah. Which is still quite big. Mm. But a lot, some of the contestants are a lot heavier. Mm-hmm. When it, I read somewhere that you'd said that you actually hadn't touched much alcohol before Gladiators. No, totally. So that, that you never me, me wedding. So what oh, was it oh, at Gladiators? Yeah, literally. Was it just that it was freely available? One of the other mates there, but Shadow. <laughs> 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 it's a theme. Him. He would do. I've seen him do six pints of Guinness with Perno and blackcurrant. I would never have. That, but I tried to do six pints of Guinness, which isn't a good thing to do. Because I'm so fit, I think I got away with it. But this was more towards the well, first year. Probably it's the third year, the bad one. But I still, you know, fourth year was good. Then I went back relaxing. But then, and then I guess in in, that, in those days, things about you know footballers still would have been going out drinking after. So it wasn't the same level of no alcohol discipline as there is today rugby guys till the foreign players come over the soccer yeah yeah being, being careful yeah so I guess f- to someone today some of this generation today who's into fitness they'd think that was mad that you would drink before going out to do the wall but actually yeah, I think that's my problem I wasn't that competitive just wanted to do enough you know well the whole point of the show is you're, you're cheering on the contenders aren't you so if the gladiators do or don't it, I guess I can see your point really it's just as long as you did enough to, to make it TV actually that is a point because it was the contestant against the contestant we was like another obstacle because you know when I get a 10 second head start on the wall which used to oik me but, well actually annoys me more now when I watch some of the reruns oh yeah it's too slow blah 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 and I think you just have a second head start you should never be caught yeah. anyway you're yeah. two stone lighter mm. <laughs> should I get over this 20 years ago <laughs> This is a rare sight, a prison officer trying to get over the wall. Last time out, Steve got caught, but Dr. Tim, on the other hand, picked up 10. Look at the speed of Cobra. Oh, nearly gets his man. Hot on the pursuit of our prison officer. No, gives him the slip. Oh, Cobra gets a better grip this time, and down comes Steve. So which was your favourite event? Yeah, yeah. Such a classic well, kind of question to ask a Mine the ones that, that was the easiest. Like, actually, I like Pyramid. Did you? Yeah. Oh, why? I don't know. I, I felt confident and good on that, even if I was... You were so quick, outfit. that's why, yeah. And uh, I learned a few techniques. I learned it past me so I could get around the waist. Yeah, you know, yeah. A few little techniques there. And I, but that, that was a uh, lot of injuries on there, so I pulled it from the show. It's come down on top of him. Referee John Anderson's whistle on overtime, and looking at it again, John from the RAF won't let go. Cobra's got him round the waist, obviously part of Operation Deny Flight, and in the end, it looked as if they were both going for a hand gliding lesson. And Dean nearly there. Cobra catches him. And a titanic struggle going on. But no one going very far. Wolf throwing fell down. Oh, the cheek of the man. Ah, Dean and Cobra knocked the Nottlet Wolf off the pyramid. I like the one where all four of us had the, had, had the huge balls. Oh, yes. What's that called now? Swing. Um, uh, it? So it was swing ball or something like that. Yeah, it might have been. Uh, there was about 19, 20 games, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. What was it like when, what, what for you when they stopped saying, this is a new event, give it a go? Because they put the riggers up on the on the events before we, we tried them. So they were the kind of like the, 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 the fodder. <laughs> Some of them really good. I know, so no, the great, riggers great, were great, 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 great,
did, yeah. So and it got faster and faster at uh, striking each rig for each event as well and, and what have you. What do you think of Skytrack when that first came into the arena? Yeah. It was weird. Didn't like it at all. No. I got out of it. I was another thing it took, me, took me a few seasons to get yeah. there. Yeah. It's like, it takes a while to suss these things out. Me longer because being a lazy person. <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me this all these years <laughs> I would never see you as that really? kind of lazy I, know, I, used to, I used to get written I didn't, didn't enjoy that really I got good at that I was catching people quick mm-hmm. oh there's another drive <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, go you've on. got a big big superhero like Hunter right? he's got to win everything well when we're on a thing like Sky Tracks you've got a hat on you've got a chest you've got a thing holding you up a harness on yeah. and it's up to tell which is which and I caught this guy straight away and I was going how great Hunter was I'm just putting it out there it was me <laughs> <laughs> it was, that, was that Joe Sachs on the commentary you did you get it wrong no it was, it was me yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll go, put it right. see I'm competitive now <laughs> you were yeah yeah you right. did yeah <laughs> now it's griping me but yeah actually sometimes I do berate myself when I watch think oh, I should have put in a bit more what? but I did last the, D- yeah. I had a you, lot of fun yeah and earned some good money bought a few houses and stuff Fair. so uh, this, it was all good at the end of the day although I can hardly walk I've got bolts in both shoulders I'm having a bicep operation in a few days yeah. I might have a whole new shoulder soon but other than that all right, hunky, hunky dory other than that it's falling apart uh, what was the best thing about being a gladiator then personal appearances yeah travelling all up around the country in different countries yeah really wasn't it yeah so when, when was the first time what, the first time you got recognised then because I mean was it quite oh, was it quite soon into that first series or did it no not for me she she got written straight away then well I used to walk around with my cap on a lot I used to look at you boys and go god how do they do that because you were all so confident and really loved people looking at you whereas I found what it, me yeah <laughs> you look beautiful when you guys are oh, walking down the street I going into town when we were at the hotel at the end at, near the NIA and we'd get like a few hours off or an afternoon or a day off and I'd be out and about just scumping around into central Birmingham and just going to shopping with my cap on and I'd be walking over the road and I'd see like two or three of you like walk, you lo- walking like that into town thinking oh my god they look amazing and you really we enjoyed we used to think that about ourselves so sure. <laughs> that's exactly it that's exactly it but that's so helpful. the ancient women was all out together that, yeah. that was good when we used to all go out together that's true what was what was the best personal appearance or the, the most random because some of the things we've had through from some of the uh, listeners has been about oh I saw Sarah Snoper bookshop and things like that there must have been a couple you thought oh what this is what this is a bit weird there's so many I did it for so many years but one stands out was an opening of space man- mounting in Euro Disney wow that's a good one what? well that Buzz Aldrin was there I was with Trojan and Hunt <laughs> that's a really good one Space and, Mountain uh, yeah they flew us over you know business class no they didn't actually I, I flew I, I had another holiday I went there three times they, we went there on train but I'm standing there and these, these ladies American ladies came over to us and they said oh, so what do you guys do so we, we do a British version of American Gladiators which I was aware of and uh, I said oh, I would love to go to space they said oh our husband's there I said who's your husband and they pointed over this Buzz Aldrin oh. John Cern and I can't remember who the other guy was I'm like oh my god and it's a massive dude it was El- Elton John had been there Cliff Richard and me and Trojan grabbed for a photo I literally grabbed him and said, come here come here Cliff he had a big smile on his face he enjoyed us he got and everyone at um, Always Own loads of really big stars Claudia Schiffer and uh, loads of them that's massive and there was salmon and champagne running for like two two to three days most wow. of us million I, I thought this is showbiz oh bless you but it sounds like you enjoyed whether it was Space Mountain or whether it was a Ledger Centre or whatever you sounded like you just enjoyed doing them all they're still doing these Comic Con things and when you're sitting there people calling you a legend all day and they oh. give you money yeah, no, you're getting paid to be. Oh, well, do no, know. it's 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 lovely, isn't it? All these yeah. years on, these guys will travel what two or three hours across the country yeah. on the yeah. train. They'll queue for two or three hours, and I just love giving them that amount of time back, yeah. just to, nice. just to chat and catch but, up. It, it, actually, there's a few times in the early days that we'd be picked up by limos, mm. and I used to say, "I'll park around the bank." I felt embarrassed. Lucky, some rough. I remember one in Glasgow. Then I thought, like, a little bit later on, I thought, no, people want to see a bit of glamour, a bit of showbiz. Wait, I mean, gl- uh, yeah, that's what Gladiator was all about, yeah, wasn't it? I mean, that- <laughs> 
humble and I, th- I did feel like that it's going to the point giving it the big and that's what would have been the expression from where I'm oh. but no, I no that's what I want to see and when I was a kid I was 15 years old and a fella called Brian Jacks he oh, yes. used to win this show called Superstars that's which it. was a multi-event competition amongst yeah. s- uh, sports stars from the 70s uh, footballers and, and people and famous that back in the day and it's a big show it's yeah. similar to, to the Gladiator not really and this guy that used to win all the time called Brian Jacks he came to my school and it's, it's literally like a, like a god coming yeah. I, was, I just was complete starstruck and I always remember that I thought if I had anything like that effect on yeah. and actually the other day I was in the gym I was coming up can I shake your hand it's because you started training and the owner of the gym said oh I started martial arts because of you oh, oh right that's lovely yeah, yeah it really is and it's also now as opposed to when it was on we'd, I'd get a little bit of grief here and there you know, who do you think you're about the app of this sort of thing? Jelly Shambi guys. If you go to a pub or a club or whatnot, which I stopped doing because I kept getting started on, you're going to get women look at you. Well, mostly me because it's so gorgeous. <laughs> I'll say it. Well, because I said, I fell off the telly and I wanted to have a chat, and it's, it's an unusual thing anyway. At Glades, it's hard to compare. It's sort of circus, showbiz, sports, all in compass, encompasses a lot of different things, doesn't it? Mm. So it's a talking point. But that used to get a lot of grief. But now it's the opposite. Everyone, I mean, the same sort of guys who are in the forties now, they would give me a bit of grief in fifties. Oh, that's brilliant. I love that show. Yeah. Even Mike Tyson, when Mike Tyson's sparring partner, a fellow called Joey Egan. Yeah. That's a bit back to me. And he, he, he recognised me. He came out and he said, "Gladiators." Oh, yeah, I love gladiators. <laughs> <laughs> he dragged me to to, to um, meet a friend. He said, "Let's go, the gladiators." I love the gladiators. And he'd just been filming, making a film with Trojan in Monaco. Oh wow. Small world. Yeah, yeah. Unless you had to walk it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so that, you know, get big. I mean, Mike's, he, he fought with a spoon at the top. He was rough and, I mean, mm. proper tough guy. And I, I love the gladiators. I was mate, I still am. We're talking about tough guys and Shadow. It sounds like you spent a lot of time with him. And he's, his problems are quite well documented. But I think you, you've said that they, the producers... To him. Yeah, the, and the producers knew yeah. about it as well. And that he... I should be telling you, should <laughs> uh, Well, it was the, um, the drug test that said to me that they knew about it for eight months. And they said, oh, we're going to get him help. Yeah. I think it might be longer than that. Because he was coming up possibly for cocaine and steroids. Mm. But it was the pressure. He was made up to be this That's ultimate right. superhero and something he always wanted to be. Mm. Mm-hmm. We we went to a personal appearance down in Land's End and all the way there we'd following him and vice versa, driving down. All the way he had his gladiator hat on. <laughs> all the, I mean it's like a five, six hour drive. All the way he had G um, etched into the back of his hair. That's right, he, yeah. No, nah, he lives for it. <laughs> really, look the part. This is how they wanted him to look that awesome. Mm-hmm. And he did. He had like five, 5% body fat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's one thing I used to make some of the girls feel ill about. He had, he had a vein down his bicep, so that, that's but the thickness of a thumb. That's right, yeah. And when they were eating their dinner, I used to move the thumb. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, see, <laughs> even thinking about it, it's enormous. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that's, that's really sad. I mean, it was sad to see him go, there, presumably, yeah, as well. Uh, uh, personal problems as well. With, with, mm. you know, I don't go on too much about it. But had other problems. It'd be nice to get him on, wouldn't Yeah, no, it would. He's a lovely guy. He is, absolutely. You see him on the TV. Himself. You know, I'm going to whip his head off and mm. weed out, weed from his eye sockets and this, that, and the other. And then he come back back a uh, stage yeah. and there you go I was lucky there wasn't I yeah. <laughs> and on this trip actually get going down to Cornwall there, there's him me my wife Scorpio and her husband and uh, and it, yeah his wife and there's a field full of white sheep except for one black one and he mm. looked over he went hang in there brother <laughs> I know where you in the field it. yeah. that's the stuff it's <laughs> dry and funny Oh. So he could have been a massive star you, yeah, absolutely and it was and I remember I had you know these annual meetings we had like our review I went in for mine on the back of Jeff Shadow coming out from his review with Nigel and it was literally seconds after Nigel because I went in and Nigel looked quite kind of a, a bit shocked and he had his head down well, he didn't, he didn't. And, I, and, I said, and I said what's wrong Nigel he said Jeff he always called us all by our gladiator names he said uh, 
I've just lost my favourite male gladiator. I said, you're kidding me. He said, all the times I've slept with her. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that. Oh, that was he was him. absolutely <laughs> devastated to lose. I think, I think with Shadow as well is that when he lost, when the contenders got one up on him, I think there was, yeah. They, they, yeah, they've beaten superhero there. They, You know, the, the Superman really almost. That was a David Goliath. But you never lost on Jewel. And you... Well, technically I did. Did you? But, but they edited that bit. Well, if you touch the platform... Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, a guy twice as happened. So you never, you never got knocked off? No, 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 I'll be everybody. This guy, but twice they edited it. Twice guys touched my platform and they kicked off a fuss. I said, let them do it again. That, the, the, I can't remember what the second time was, but I did the same. Tried to show off. I started spinning a stick, whacked him on the head and I got slipped. Yeah, I remember. But I really beat him, but I can't. When I get off for the interview, I can't say, well, well you've just beaten him. Yeah, yeah. You know. You know. Shadow pulled a muscle in atmospheres and will be sitting out dual for this program. So Three, Cobra steps in. Two, Cobra, our full contact kickbox champion, straight to work. Oh, look at that. Tremendous punishment. Oh, he's jumped. He surrendered. He's thrown in the towel. What a crushing victory. And Cobra taking a leaf out of Shadow's book. Fast, powerful. Relentless blows, getting the job done fast. But to have that win rate throughout the whole of the season, as, as David was saying, you were like one of the four who actually did the whole, the whole shebang for the for the whole extent of when the show was out there. What was it like in those moments when you when you did lose? What was it like the first time you lost? I don't remember. Yeah. But you probably shrugged Always. it off and said, as long as yeah. I did enough. Yeah, as long as it looked good. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I've still got a chance of getting another series. Because it was, that was it, well, you know, only can have a year. Actually, but, from the fifth year, a few times I was thinking, oh, I should move on, do something else. Did I, you? Uh, yeah, Didn't the know last that. couple of years, yeah. Mm-hmm. And what was it like with New Glad? Because I left after four and a half years. What was it like with New Glad's coming in? Was it always a bit more of a, oh, what's he going to be like, or what's she going to be like? Go. Helpful. In fact, one of, one of the other gladiators, who shan't be named, kept telling me off and giving him advice. I'll do it this way, do it that way. Uh, oh. Yeah, more competitive than me. Mm-hmm. Look, oh, 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 yeah. If you could go back in time, Mickey, to 1992 and do it all over again, would you do it all over again? Yeah, I'd get rid of the mullet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I would have stayed in. I would, I would have stayed in better shape, and I would have tried a bit harder. But oh yeah, I would have been a lot more careful with my money because it's easy come. You can yeah. go and turn Christmas lights on or something. It's two thousand pound. That's right. And yeah. people screaming. And I was careful for a couple of years. Then it's, it's so easy. It's, you just get used to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, and you you, do, you don't know when it's going to end. But it was very easy money for doing stuff you enjoy. Yeah. Mind you, saying that it doesn't matter what you do. It did end up going. You know, you go to a person. Pronounce and it's oh, hello, yeah, wolf's horrible. Yeah, the jet is fit. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh. Actually, what influence? How long did you do four seasons? I did four seasons on the TV, and and I did the the live event, yeah. which is when I had my accident. Yeah, so four and a half years. The impression you made, everyone remembers. Oh. Check. Yeah. Oh. Where where do you come up on that list? You reckon? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you were always up there. You you were hunter, weren't you? <laughs> I didn't get there. He's, he's eighteen. He's eighteen foot tall. Exactly. Actually, I've, I've, that's one thing. I've got it's in the back and the hips and whatnot. Mm. I've lost about two inches. Yes, gosh. That's yeah. Right. You do actually get older anyway. Well, you mm. Your disc height. So I see people I ain't seen for ages. Have you shrunk? Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I wasn't that tall in the first place. So what? No, it, it, apart from the pain. That pain means a lot to me. Yeah. With the tones. Apart from the pain that you're obviously in, but you you run a great treatment plan. You look really in good shape. Yeah. You're managing to keep and modify how you do keep fit in the world. Is life good for you now? Yeah, I'm far too contented. Are you? Yeah. Not good with anyone. Say that. Just stay in age. That's um, nice to hear. I've got a bungalow opposite the beach. Oh, I take wow. dogs for a walk in the morning. I have different, lots of different beaches as well. Canberra just up the road. Beautiful. Especially in the summer. I'm on the Romney Marsh. When, when the rape season's up in um, April, it's stunning. Yeah. Drop, so I do a lot. You was doing a lot of side bending this year. It's like riding through a Van Gogh painting. It's beautiful. But, I don't don't need a lot of money for. For, for that no, no no absolutely not when when Gladiators finished and that was it they were like we're doing no more how how did you process that I was, I was expecting it anyway well, that, that, I always used to say oh, I can drop, drop this at any time always like, also took the attitude you know I could, could get injured or whatever I could go at any time 
I know it's, it's quite fickle. Well, the same would have been for you, Jet, though. You'd have thought that you probably would have gone as long as it had been until your injury. Yeah. I, I didn't think it would be an injury that would take me away. away. I was well, just I just not it's not, you, you haven't gone anywhere because you've always been brought up. Oh, yeah. Everyone's oh, always talking talking. about you. Oh, know, oh, you know. I didn't want to. And also, when well, it finished, you know, you well, still am putting that costume on. People <laughs> ask me not to. <laughs> and that, when you walk in the dogs. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. It's <laughs> I've worn it to a couple of parties. Really? Yeah. And what's it? Uh, and you got kids going, "Mummy, what's that snake doing?" Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> in the shorts. Well, because they come out there. Oh yeah, I bet you wear that everywhere, don't you? I go, yeah. It does. It does. I know. We all, um, it's twice I've done that. In the comic cons, and then when we went on Good Morning Britain fairly recently, um, and uh, to cheer up a bad week, I well, think news-wise, I think it was like, "Let's get all the glands yeah, on." Yeah. yeah. And what was it? Was it uh, Ben well, Shepherd? Bless him. You had your nipples out, and he said, "Can you just politely cover them?" Both? Please, Cobra. <laughs> you were hilarious. Said something about, like, you want to try and keep them in? I said, no, I'm trying to keep them in. That's right. <laughs> he, yeah. Yeah, he hadn't texted me, said, are oh, you wearing your costume? I mean, I, like, we're, I'd like to get them in a few of you at that morning, but, you know, some of the girls are like, dying to 33. <laughs> and was cracking on for 60, so. <laughs> he looks fantastic, Hunter. He does, he does. Yeah. It's always nice to see everybody again, isn't it? It's lovely. Yes. There's a real kind of sense of uh, camaraderie still like when we was there on, on GMTV mm-hmm. we were together I always took a step back and see everyone mm-hmm. chatting away and all that oblivious to everyone else around them mm-hmm. you know it's nice we do, yeah. do enjoy each other's company do, do you think Gladiator should return do you think yeah, it need, needs what would you do need a, it needs a big arena because when um, yeah. when Sky did it it just hasn't it just doesn't come across on the screen with four or five hundred people in the audience. You need that big arena. I don't know what it is with technology nowadays. It looked great on the screen, but it's just something about the thousands of people in the audience going mad that it, it, that it doesn't cap- capture with just a few. I don't know. So big, uh, big arena, and presumably yeah. they'd have to spend money to do it, proper money. And I think then, and it, it, I think it's the kind of it's something similar to that. Yeah, Ninja Warrior, isn't it? Ninja Warrior, yeah. It's still against a few people in the audience. You haven't got the little guy against David and Goliath. That's right, yeah. You haven't so much got the beautiful women. Oh, he can come as again. Well as, <laughs> yeah. as well as Diane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Never but you know what I'm saying? You've got the, 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 the sexy guys. Well, yeah, Wolf. I know, yeah, I was going to say. Well, speaking of Wolf, <laughs> he, he says if it comes back, he would like to be involved. He could. Yeah. Uh, would love to be a ref. Would you be the new John Anderson? I would love that. Does it still haunt your dreams? <laughs> Gladiators. Yeah, I've very rarely got telling off. <laughs> say else. Yeah, telling off. A few times he did berate me properly to my face. As I'm not you, call blah blah blah. And I'm like, mm. I'm straight back to school again. Yeah. He had that authority. He did. Yeah. yeah. He, he did add something to the show. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, actually, he was quite vain. John Anderson? Mm-hmm. Vain? Did I, say, I say this? Aww. Well, I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> he's deaf anyway. <laughs> Sorry mm-hmm. to all the deaf people out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that he, won't, he, won't, he might not hear this, and he probably will now, will he? But he loves he me. We're going to catch up with him. He loves me. Well. I bought my fantastic Mont Blanc pen once. Oh, yeah, did you? Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah, I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. I knew it was someone that was popping. I, I don't know what I was being so, so sycophantic. Anyway, it's on Big Breakfast, and we was promoting one of our training books. And he's shout, I heard him shouting about John. What's up with you? Like, What's up, John? He said, I want makeup. Oh, that's I said, it. Yes, Bye. I remember now. Oh, he's going to cane me. I said, <laughs> I said I'm not going to make up, John. I want makeup. What, <laughs> <laughs> John? Anyway, I don't know where he did get his makeup, but I thought, you know. <laughs> he, he wanted to make sure he didn't have it. Yeah. It's like polishing poo, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, John. No, I'm not. <laughs> you, you can tell me off when I see you. Yeah, he was. And, I read somewhere the other day, Mickey, that you said you now you now feel a bit like half a gladiator. You've, you've had you've had quite a trouble couple of yeah. couple of years. You, you know, it was pneumonia, wasn't it? Yeah, I've had. Well, I've had uh, 
severe acute pancreatitis, overdose from the painkillers, took for two days, I had to get an ambulance there. I, because of my hip and I had um, a problem with the blood, iron overload, so that was um, drinking too much and things, self-inflicted sort of. I, I've got um, sensitivity to, to the Jack 2 gene. Like a lot of uh, Northern European guys are sensitive to iron, too much iron. It's like hemoch uh, hemochromatosis, it's called. But it's um, ten percent of the hypersensitive to, to iron and, and stuff. Or if you've got too much testosterone, which a lot of bodybuilders have, mm -hmm. or I officially take them to testosterone. Anyway, so I had loads of problems there, and I was so sick of going to the doctors. I had a rotten cold, flu for wet, actually two, nearly three months. I just didn't bother going well. I, I ended up in hospital with pneumonia and um, pleurisy, um, fluid on the lung, all sorts. I, I, nearly died a couple of times there that makes you appreciate life uh, and there was I remember thinking uh, if I get anything else I'm not coming out of here and I looked terrible I weren't looking that much better before <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. but do, you, do you worry now? yeah well I'm looking after myself now it's, uh, it's difficult when it's, I have lots of pain from, a, from an arthritis in his hip it's, it's no fluid or cartilage whatsoever there so it's bone cracking and spot. so I, I have to to, to function, I have to take the pain because well, should have a new hip in March. I'm, there's 20 in front of me, and I, if there's a cancellation, I'll be in for that. I've got torn bicep as well, which aggravates me. I've ripped every muscle off the back of my shoulder. I'm doing a some stunt work on a Bollywood film. Oh. <laughs> An old singing Bollywood film in in Cornwall. <laughs> really good money, <laughs> fantastic fun. I, I was playing the Russian bad guy, Russian oh, thug, um. and I, I, I was doing a fight scene with with the big handsome. Uh, Indians and stuff. Uh, they've the Shan, the Shan. Anyway, I got to a bad fall because the pancreas was on for my hip. Um, I didn't feel anything. Yeah, all the muscles. It's like every muscle on the back of the has come off. They attached the front, but I can't lift the arm. It's, it's gone for yeah, yeah. So I've had all this. So I said, maybe if you got a cold. Folks, you know, don't leave it. I kept having people saying, oh, yeah, just man flu. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I was lucky to be here. And what's your one last abiding memory of being on Gladiators? When everyone says, what the best memory of, of being on, on that show? Oh, it's a lot. Right. I think, I think laying there on my bed, I think I'm going to be famous. Just staying in the, in the high. Sort of the anticipation of the fame. That was yeah. the nicest, one of the nicest moments. And then the rest of it, you just enjoyed the ride. My nephews come to see me as a genie in Swansea. And Panto. Yeah. yeah. And actually, you know, it's three and four. And they said, can you really do magic, Uncle Nick? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a oh, cool. spunk going off and doing magic, being a genie. And that's in our uncle is, you know, superhero on the telly. And the I'm doing magic there. And, and so this is going to sound ridiculous, but I visited a lot of kids dying. Mm -hmm. standing over, which is a privilege. A lot yeah. passed away, which I, I do ask. I, I see about six over four months. They were passed away, little kids. And they seem to, they seem to handle you know, life, the cancer and whatnot, a lot easier than adults. Yeah. yeah. I think they not, don't really know. Uh, they've had such a short life. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I don't think I know what I'm missing. I do ask, I'm like, it's getting a bit much now. I'm still, I'm still carrying it now. But then that wonderful thing. One kid, they, they said he ain't smiled all week. And uh, I went in there, being silly and all that. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's laughing, but he passed away next day. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. He will always be a superhero to this fellow gladiator jet. And I'm yes, so, so glad you're still with us. Will it's you so come I... back and see us again soon? Yes. Have you had enough of me now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boss. Oh, no. Right. We just yeah, thank you. I'll it's been lovely to me. see you. So there we go. Old Snake Hips himself. <laughs> now bionic Snake Hips to be. He's had such a journey in terms of at this age and stage now of his life, mm. uh, literally having to sort of, he's fallen apart and now he's being put back together. So he literally is bionic Snake Hips. But you know what gets me? He's still as funny as ever. He used to entertain us all on the shop floor and in the wings, literally, and in the hotel. He would never switch off. He will never lose that Norman Wisdom slight spark. Yeah. 
used to impersonate him all the time. Yeah, and no, actually, listening to that back a second time, you pick up so much more from him. There's there's a boy, sort of childish element w- within him that's never gone away. He's still got that cheekiness about them, but there is also a bit of a vulnerability about him as well, isn't there? Very much. He's de- definitely been through the what we call the dark night of the soul, which I'm sure many people may go through once, if hopefully not twice in their in their lives. And he's come out the other side, and I can see that he's kind of this. He's really kind of reevaluated where he's at. He's gathered himself back together, and there's that cobra coming straight back through at you. Well, it's interesting when I saw him come in. I mean, obviously he's you know not walking very well, and even during the chat, you could see that he was clearly in discomfort. And it, when you see the video of the chat, you'll see as well he he does move quite a lot because I think he is just that uncomfortable with, he, with, with, with his at the moment. You're right, but I saw him a number of months ago at a Comic Con as well, and he was even more broken then. But what he'd said to me on the way into the studio in the interview as well, so you know what Di, he said, I've started to, Jess, no, he, he does call me Di, but you can call me Jay if you want, anyone can. And uh, he was just saying, I've really modified, and this is a true gladiatorial thing, I've really modified my training. I've found a way to train around my injuries and start enjoying training again. Mm. Which I really liked because it's it's so easy for anyone to fall off the wagon if you've trained all your life. You kind of fall in love with it and out of love with it because you know you put on weight, you lose weight, you put on weight, you lose weight, you lose your health, you get your health. It's it's the rhythm of life, I guess. And the one thing that just blew my mind is someone who is so confident. He wanted to be famous, so that's why the gladiators thing worked <laughs> well for him. And then that was that moment where he just well, he just a bit of a bombshell that he dropped to us, saying, "Well, actually, I got there, and I thought I can't do this." Yeah. And yeah, I was like, wow. Yeah. He was the boy behind the big, you know, the, the big bit of the set was the, the wall. That was like where all the mechanics went on behind before we kind of went onto the shop floor and literally seconds before. I can't believe he said that. I was just going to turn and walk and run. Wow. We, I didn't know that either. And that just goes to show how human a gladiator can still actually be. Uh, yeah. And since he left the studio, he has text died <laughs> constantly of all these other stories that. I remember, um, this. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, I've got more. So I think at some stage we'll get him on. Maybe it will be good actually to have him on with Hunter to have. So it's the two of them riffing about other stories yeah. that they remember. Because I think you know when it's just yourself, I think it's it can be quite daunting. But when there's two of you, maybe it was something that'd be quite good. And certainly we definitely want to hear your Cobra stories. So. Have you bumped into him in a supermarket? Have you met him before? Have you got pictures that you can send us? You can get in touch with us at thegladpod at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. This has been the Gladpod in association with Gladiators TV. And here is John Sachs. Good competition, good spirit, great sportsmanship as both contenders show mutual respect. Join us again next week for the ultimate challenge, the might of... 